Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Blink Podcast. It's Darren Prattley here. Hey, it's great to see you. And today's topic is, do you really care? We know it's a challenging environment out here. We've got six key things that you need to do to show your customers that you care more and to create more opportunity. Hi everybody, Darren here. Hey, it's great to have you on board for today's Blink podcast. Let's bring my good friend from across the ditch, Jonathan Craig. How are you, mate? Good to see you. Very good, Looking bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Oh, yes. It's, we're always bright-eyed and bushy-tailed over here. Although I tell you what, Bloody the oh. weather, it's come in quick and cold. Oh. And the Southern Hemisphere has just turned the corner. And it's so depressing. It really is. Mate, I, I don't think we've seen the sun for a month. So I was like thinking about packing my bags and heading across the ditch, man, because that's how bad it's been. It's been yeah. terrible. I remember about 18 months ago, they were talking about the Chinese were going to create their own sun. And I thought, what a terrible <laughs> idea. I'm actually getting, I'm starting to get on board with it now. I'm starting to get on track with it. Look out. I'm starting to think, man, yeah, there could be a little bit of an upside to that. Yeah, not all bad. So we, we had we had one lot of floods, then we cleaned up, we had a second lot of floods, and then guess what? Last week hammered again, you know, the government sending out civil defense, sending us home early, Aucklanders stuck in traffic for four hours because of the, the, the deluge that came but didn't. And then I heard a whole lot of people that, you know, have recovered from the the previous two floods. One, one poor, poor family I heard about, they've done all the renovations, went out and bought all new furniture, basically got the house back to better condition than it was, and then last week got flooded again and lost all their furniture, lost, you know, downstairs having to be redone again. The only the advantage I can see in that is at least you got the plans done, ready to go. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just tragic. But anyway, should have just got the, to... Uh... They should have followed the Greek nonna rule of furniture. Let's keep the What's plastic that? on. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, exactly, exactly. You might have got away with it. Yeah, no, well, you know, I uh, well, we had we had heavy downpours, and actually, we lost power for a couple of days. Wow, for the house. So yeah, we're sorry we missed out on recording an episode of the podcast from a different room of the house. And of course, the scramble, Darren, when you lose power, what is it? What is it? You know it. You used to know it. How do you charge your phone? Ah, the fish tank, mate. The fish. Oh tank. no! Fish tank. What did that? What did you do? Uh, extension cable from the neighbours. Oh, that was nice of them. Yeah. That was very good. Yeah, save the fish. Anyway, we're all good. So let, let's get on to the let's get on to the podcast. It's going to be a quick one today because I'm going to be honest. I've got a call in half an hour that I need to take, and so we're going to get this done in that time. No less a quality of an episode just more compact love it all right so today we're talking about do you really care and the reason why we think that this is a great topic for today because there are still some challenges out there there are still the market is a bit sludgy in all areas all uh, industry probably, probably the only industry where it isn't is recruitment there seems yep. to be a lot of fluid activity around recruitment and people yep. coming out of COVID and deciding, you know what, I think I want to change. I need a new environment. I, you know, there's new opportunities. And so that sort of movement is still going okay. But in a lot of other industries, I'm seeing it. Cars, real estate, of course, which we focus on, but just general business. People totally. Are just going, things aren't as smooth or as fluid as they used to be. Yep. And in order... To get that fluidity back, that fluid, oh, I'm not even going to say, to get that mojo back, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about the one thing that's really going to make a difference, and that is, do you really care? Yeah, and, and this is the piece that, uh, and we were having a conversation about it internally within our business, is like when we're looking and talking to clients and, and seeing how they're, they're engaging with their clients, we as customers today have got ourselves into a bit of a situation when you see us coming out of COVID, 
we we had a a really different environment over that COVID period where sometimes results didn't really matter. And it was a case of like, as long as you were okay and you know you were getting through and that mental health piece was strong and, and making sure we were looking after the teams and everything was all good. But the problem with that is that it's a mindset. And the challenge with that now is I think that we've really got to understand getting ourselves out of the mindset of it being all okay before to now getting a bit of a, a change in what do we have to do to re-engage and, and be with customers that many of them are having real challenges in their lives and, and in their businesses. So um, I, I'm what I'm seeing is the customers that you know the best, that you're engaged the best, that you have better conversations with, they're the ones that really are going to help us uh, you know, gain some more traction in the marketplaces. But for those people to be really valuable to you, you have to actually show you really care. And and this sort of surface level bouncing ball across the top of, hi, I just wanted to connect and thanks very much and see you later. I just don't think nowadays that's going to cut it. We've actually got to start having bigger and more meaningful conversations with people in our environments. Yeah, 100%. I saw a post, uh, I'm not going to name uh the person but i saw a post recently on social media and it was about how to uh, how to have someone engage with you or, or pay attention or get credits in the bank with them and that is go to their posts and be one of the first to like it you know go to your posts and uh, and you know leave a comment that was awesome or something like that you know and it was all about well you know they will love the fact that you just validated their posts and then you'll get credits in the bank for that and then you'll, you know, that'll keep you top of mind and you'll be able to form a relationship. And I'm like, okay, yes, I can see how that would work. Like, I, I but, it's, got, it's got merit. But. But is it legit? Like, it's, it's as you said, it's the ping pong ball dance, bouncing across the top. Yeah. You've got to put some depth into your relationships. You've got to really nurture the people in the market right now. Even if there's no immediate return on your investment or effort, right? And it's a mindset thing of I'm not ringing this person because I need them to give me money for what I do. I'm ringing this person because I care for them in this time and the universe will bring it back at some point if I deserve it. 100%. It's a bit woo-woo for me, Darren, but it is sort of is. It is how it works, isn't it, really? Imagine that. Imagine being in, a, in an environment where you actually care about your customers more than a sale or a transaction and that they feel that actually you're someone who wants to help them, look after them, be with them on their journey. Uh, just imagine that. Because us as customers right now, I think what we're needing is better insights, advice, support, actually what decisions to make. You know, look at look at our financial services sectors, right? That That's the group of people right at the moment that are probably needed more now than ever. Oh, yeah. And I had a financial services person say to me, Darren, look, yeah, but those people there aren't going to take out a new some new debt, so I'm not going to get paid. So why would I do it? And I'm like, ah, no, well, what we need is we need, that's your opportunity to build those connections, build those relationships yeah. for future. And I, and that's where I feel at the moment that I, I feel like we're still trying to do that short term transaction that we've sort of been led down the path of over the last uh, three or four years. I'll give you a good example of this. Like, I do some some work in marine, right? And one of the things that I noticed with that was over the COVID period, how many boats did these places sell? Oh, a ton. Like money like, was what people were buying the best boats in the world because they couldn't go to Fiji and use the boats over there. Like it was so crazy. what you had is you had these boat places that were just really good at selling boats because everyone was coming and selling boats. Whereas at the moment, the market's gone tough. It's a luxury item. So all of a sudden, that's st slowed up, right? There's stock on the yards. And we've got salespeople sitting in these businesses going, right, I wonder who I'm going to talk to. And I'm like, this is, the, this is the time where we've got to get back out there and actually show our customers that we really care. I love this topic, mate, and and I think for this market, this is a this is a cracker. Could you imagine being little Johnny, little Johnny who took on a job as a 
as a boat salesman two months before COVID struck. And he'd be like, I'm not sure how to do this. I'm not sure. And the guy, the other guys in the yard would have been, mate, just keep talking about the size and, and upgrade the motors. And that's a good motor. You probably need a little bit bigger if you want to, you know, be a little bit, you know, rah, rah with the bow waves and all that sort of stuff. And that's got four beds and that's got this depth sounder included. Little Johnny learns his script in two months and then bang, COVID hits. He'd be like, oh no, this is a disaster. Then goes on to set new records for the whole boat industry, with not knowing anything, thinking for 12 months, 18 months, this is the greatest life in the history of anyone. Like, look how good I am. Goes and buys himself a new Subaru. <laughs> That's around, right. right. That's Thinks right. Well, Ford amazing. Ranger. A Ford yeah. Ranger. Ford yeah. Got, got to get a bigger boat. And, um, and then all of a sudden it just parks. And they're sitting there going, what happened? What have I done? How many industries can you and I apply that principle to that yeah. we're working with at the moment? Well, you mentioned so financial eight services. Eight industries? Yeah, almost all industries. Right? I yeah. don't know any. I don't know any that are sitting there quite happy, except other other than recruitment. Yeah, recruitment's been really good. Recruitment's travel been indi- really good. travel yeah. industry for me is really strong at the moment. Yeah. So those in the travel industry, because everyone's going, well, if I've got some spare bucks, guess what? We're getting out of here i'm going on holiday yeah that's a, it's 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 really you said about financial services I, i've got a financial services business that i that i work with and they're flat out flat yeah. out and i'm sitting yeah. there saying well that's great but now between the announcement of the federal budget and the end of the financial year this is your finals season this is the yeah. playoffs right here yeah. if you don't show up yeah. in this six weeks when people are actually thinking about having to do their tax returns, thinking yep. about whether they they can afford their house, thinking yep. about housing affordability going up, like now is the moment. Yep. If you even if you're flat out busy now, you're not going to be in September if you don't show up now. And, and like this is the bit, right? This that's exactly it. Is just getting your understanding to go. You got to show up. Show it's up. not about the sale. It's not about it's not about how much how many much more business business opportunities you're going to close. It's actually about showing up, being in the marketplace at a time when it's really bloody challenging everybody. And how easy is it right now? Like I look at it right now because I'm coming from a content point of view. And if you're using your content to show that you care, so you can do it at scale. It doesn't just have to be phone call to you know one on one. You can use content to show you care. Right now, there's so much uh, information out there that you can just translate into ordinary, everyday speak for people so they yep. better understand it. And then they will thank you for caring enough for translating it into something that they understand so they don't have to spend three hours listening to oh. a politician and then try and decipher it themselves. Take it. Take that learning and just do it, man. That's that's just... See, that's exactly it. You got a whole lot of people out there that are sitting out there going, they need to hear that, right? That's right. So we've got here, you've got uh, customer insights. What do I do? Yep. Number one of caring, what do I do? Because customers are sitting there right now going, what do I do? <laughs> like, should I buy the boat? I was thinking should completely the other way. Should I pay off my credit card? Should I take out some insurance or should I get rid of my insurance or do we need to upgrade our house? Cause everyone says the best time to upgrade your family home is at the bottom of a trough oh. uh, in sales. So this is the time to do it. Do I do that? Or actually do I stay where I am and try and pay off some more debt or do I, uh, 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 uh. what do I do? Do this. What do I do? Do this. Help them. Give them so some just- ideas. Even if it's a number of different pathways to take, spell out the pathways show them that there are some options to consider here and then how to bloody consider them yeah Does oh by the way them. it's not about a sale it's about the opportunity to give them a pathway that helps them make some decisions about where they want to go and what they want to do then guess what then guess mm. what you know this opportunity comes from that part of the game and i think that comes back to real estate too right this drives oh. me mad it drives me mad in real estate is that all these people, you, you know, I go to conferences and I say, put up your hand if you make video to promote your business. 
and they go, me, I do video. And I'm like, okay, how many of you that put up your hands, the videos that you make are actually just touring houses? Yep. And most people's hands stay up. I said, okay, who does any other videos other than just touring houses? And it's virtually none. And you go, yep. okay. So what you're trying to do is find someone to buy a particular house at a particular time using an algorithm that only seeds out to 2% of your following to start with. So unless you hit them right on the nose and get lucky like a moonshot, you're never going to reach anyone. No How way. about you do this? How about you sell them the market? How about you sell them the lifestyle of the area? And then when they come to you, show them the pathway. Show them the way. As the Mandalorians say, this is the way. Show yeah. them. And yeah. then when they reach right. out to you, then you can hand pick the properties that best suit their needs from the data you just gleaned from the phone call you had because you were caring about what they actually wanted. You're listening and saying, okay, this is what they want. Okay. They need ground floor. Can't have second story because grandma lives with them and can't do stairs. So where are my best single story homes? Back. Love it. Or one with a lift. Love it. That's it. Number Love two. It. Do results of, matter? Is that what it says? Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I'm saying at the moment is everyone's kind of getting hunkered down about, you know, I've got owners and sales managers that are starting to get a little bit bitey around have they got enough sales? Have they got enough money coming in or number enough sort of pre-orders to, mm -hmm. to be able to meet certain levels? And, and one of the things that I just want people to start realizing at the moment is the only way you're going to get those is actually to show that you actually really care because no one might be buying your product at the moment unless they they really need it or really want it or there's a real reason for it and unless you can identify those they're not going to buy right so the big part here is you know results do matter and i'm i'm you know me i'm i'm very much about the making sure we tick our uh, our results or our targets that we set but at the moment, it's got to be about actually showing how much we care and engage with the customer rather than making sure that we're just hitting every sales target that's in front of us. Yeah, I think, let's look at real estate again. I love it. I love real estate. That's why I always talk about it. I apologize to anyone listening to the podcast that isn't in real estate, but hopefully you can adopt this to your business too. Well, you stock, can. Stock levels. Yep. Yep. You know, I was explaining to my kids last night as we were driving to hockey training, if a real estate agent doesn't have houses to sell and they don't have a rent roll, they don't have a business. Yep. Right? Now, here's the thing. The market that we're in at the moment, there's no stock because the mainstream media is belting everyone around the ears about how bad this global recession, inflation, housing affordability thing's going, right? The banks came out and said, house prices are going to drop 25 to 30% in Australia across the eastern seaboard. That's what they said six months ago. It hasn't happened. If you go, if the real estate agents go to the data, the property prices here have dropped somewhere around 4 to 6%. Right. Not a big deal. That's where they dropped. And they're already back. Sydney is plus 2 or 3% up. So, so, so. So what's happened with us, mate, is we haven't had a stock problem, right? We have had a lot of stock still come to market. So, so, and I and I'm more thinking about uh, investment properties that people are getting out of. I'm more thinking about sort of people that are either upgrading now because the market's where it's at, or people who have to sell. So we've seen stock in the market. So we've seen lots of stock. The problem is we've got the buyer issue because the buyers are sitting there saying the media is telling us that house prices are going to drop by another 20 percent right. so what would you do if you were a buyer and someone You'd said wait. that you're going to house prices are going to drop 20 percent over the next two or three months or the next six months what would you do you bloody right. wait so that's Here's what we're that's thing. where we are whichever side of the argument whichever side of the scenario that we've just put forward yep where are the real estate agents that are explaining the scenarios none no, i wouldn't say none but not enough okay i was i reckon i've got one guy I, there's one guy up in new new south wales newcastle he is sitting there he's not even talking about the properties he's got listed he's just talking about the data and the market 
Yeah, nice. Right. And the nice. investment, hey, you move out of Sydney, you can sell for this much medium price, and then you can buy this and you're on yep. waterfront. Like he's actually yep. selling the pathways. And guess Love what's it. happened to his guess what's happened to his GCI? Up she goes. They're ringing him from everywhere. And he's like, I yeah. can't believe it. I'm getting all these inbound leads. I've got too much stock. I have to get an assistant. <laughs> But you see, he's going out there and actually showing he cares about his market. He cares about his environment. And that's what creates his opportunity, right? He's only, he's, this is a really getting... good topic for a podcast, mate. This is a really good topic because in this market right now, this is gold. Did you want me to be recording this? Have we started? Oh, you should. You should have. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. Of course, because you're listening to it. it but that's the thing, right? He's showing that he cares because he's not saying buy this one particular house. It's a gem. Yeah. He's saying here's all the data that you need to make an informed decision. And that gives them the confidence to then take action because they know that he's given them all the information and cares and has a smile and he's a nice guy and off he goes, right? So it's not that hard. Next one. Number three. I think we've got a situation at the moment where there's quite a bit of nervousness about what people's uh, financial position is going to be in the future. So a lot of people sort of ha are projecting forward and going, God, if this market stays like it is now, uh, we're going to be in a hell, you know, it's going to be hard, it's going to be tough, it's going to be difficult. And, and what I'm just wanting people to sort of get a bit of a handle on at the moment is we know that this is a challenging environment. But we do know there are business opportunities or sale opportunities out there in the marketplace. They're not at the levels they were, but they're enough to pay your bills. They're enough to pay what we need to get paid if we're out there collecting up a wider group of, of customers to be able to generate the level of sales that we need because we do need a bigger group of people to talk to. We do need to be out there in the marketplace more to hunt out those sales opportunities. But getting all hell bent and, and beaten up over potential financial pressure in the future is only going to put your current opportunities and sales opportunities in jeopardy because of the way you're thinking. So I just get people to say, look, we know it's challenging. Review your current financial position. Make it as lean and as mean as you can. But then also then start realizing that that we don't need that financial pressure to have an effect on what we're doing at the front of the ship as well. Yeah, that is really interesting. That you know the positive mindset, the doom and gloom, and for you and I who you know we've lived through some, we haven't lived through a significant localized uh, war. I suppose we could say we have. I mean, there's been Afghanistan and Iraq, but that was sort of yep. somewhere else away from us. It's not like a world war uh, where things sort of all had to grind to a halt uh, to sort it out. But we've been through things like September 11. That shut down industries for, yep. for months. Yeah, like Planes totally. did not fly for months. Yeah, yeah, Try, uh, totally. Um, you know, then, you know, the GFC of 2009. I remember, you know, yep. I... I was out one day and my job was to go and interview all the financial experts in Melbourne about the GFC. And I remember between those interviews, ringing my dad saying, grab all your shares and trade them into gold. Like just yeah. switch it all to gold. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, this is what they're telling me to do. This is what they're saying to do. Like do it. And then we were all sort of sitting there. And I think I remember maybe because I was in a job and I don't want to make too light of it, but I was getting paid a salary. So I was probably a little bit comfortable um, and didn't really feel the effects of it like others. But I know so many people who started businesses in the GFC. Kogan, yeah. for one. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, he's now listed it. It's worth billions. Um, so many people still, you can still trade. And I remember Rosalind Kogan, the guy that started Kogan, saying to me, he goes, Creaky, during the GFC, if you went to a shopping center, were there still people in the shopping center? I'm like, yes, it was still hard to find a park in the shopping center. When you stopped at the lights in peak hour, are there still cars on the road? Yeah, there's still cars on the road. And he goes, we're gonna, most people are going to be fine. Yeah. Like the world moves on. It's might tough. Be a bit, might be yep. a little bit harder and you've got yep. to adjust. But if you're smart and you're above yep. the flood line of yep. smart, then you will survive. You might not set record years, yeah. but there's still a way to survive. Yeah. And the more you do now, 
the better it's going to be when we come out the other end of it and things go good again. Yep. And that, and that's where I just say, like, go, go back into your financial position, hunt out your expenses, trim, tighten, repair, change, improve, whatever it needs to be that you need to do around that stuff to get you in a position to be able to ride it out. And, and then, you know, to be able to hunt out a few deals that keep those bills paid, you're not going to make a a, a, a squillion and you're not buying a new Maserati, but you're going to be able to get through these challenging times and, and don't make those crazy decisions of, you know, I'm, I'm making a catastrophe. I'm out of here because this industry is not giving me the, the millions of dollars that I was earning before. It's actually, look, it's just, it's just the time it's the market, but get, let's get a plan to get through. It's harvesting season. Yeah. Yeah. Harvesting season. That's all it is. Yep. Don't go and build yep. new paddocks and buy new farms. No. Harvest the patch you got. Yep, 100%. Harvest the patch you got. So let's get to the solutions. We've only got a couple of minutes, I know, and we don't want to rush through them too quickly. We sort of might have to. Solution number one, target market. So really identify who you need to be talking to. Right, so number one is just let's get a list, actually get a piece of paper and or, or get onto your computer on a, on a page and start listing out the target groups of people you need to be talking to, whether it's past clients, whether it's people in a particular geographic area, whether it's professional services, whether it's other businesses that are associated to yours. Just get a group of people that you need to be targeting to and talking to and grow it big. Don't be limited to, oh, I've got 10 people to call. No, get out there and make your 50 get 60 get 100 connections and identify some bigger target markets because once you got that you're away one thing i like to do with my target market in helping refine it is i go back and look at the clients that i actually enjoyed working with Love it. and yep. then even you know with zero and all these other yep. softwares around you can actually list your best payers so who yep. over the lifetime of your engagement has paid you the most money have a look at them and then find other people or businesses that are like them. Yep. Right? That's do, you know, you... do you know what else you do? What? You go and buy 15 bottles of champagne Yeah. and go and drop them off to those 15 people that have paid you the most and actually drop it off to them and say, hey, I just wanted to drop this off. Where are we at the moment? Are you seeing and hearing about people going out, dropping a bottle of champagne, saying thanks very much for your business in your past? Everyone's bitching and moaning about what they're making now. Get out there and start doing some stuff that people go, wow, that was so nice. They recognize me. It doesn't have to be a bottle of wine. It could be a box of chocolates even. Come on. Yeah, it can be donuts. Love it. Brilliant idea. Donuts. All right, number two, medium. What do you mean by medium? This is how you medium like is what medium do you need to be using to connect with people? Is it digitally? Is it email? Is it face to face? Is it calls? Uh, is it just what are the different mediums that you can use to connect with your customers or your marketplace? And for me right now, if our topic is do you really care? I just go, the medium has to be face to face. You gotta, you gotta get connected with people and have deeper, bigger conversations. And and one of the things that I'm seeing at the moment is we're not getting those those face to face. It's that text message, oh, how are you? Person goes, I'm great. You go, oh, I just wanted to check in. No, we're fine at the moment. Thanks very much. And that's the end of the connection, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we actually have to create those into something bigger and more meaningful. So yeah. um, I just go, what mediums are you using? and try and get it face to face and have a, con a longer conversations i think you're right i mean you love the phone call you're always going on about the phone call the whole last episode was about cold call phone calls how good was that great. it's going great pa pancho yep. was great uh, it's getting, great insights yeah it's getting a lot of interaction i think a lot of people have some fears around cold calls but as we prove over and over again they don't have to be cold calls there's so many different ways that you can connect with people now yep um, yeah, I'm still waiting for the day that you get your first you get your first lead via Snapchat. We'll get you there. We'll get you snapping away. Uh, we'll get uh, you get your beautiful daughter who celebrated her birthday this week to, uh, she loves it, to man. Snapchat away and um, use that to get leads to warm them up. No, I don't want to be too shallow about it, but I was driving last night and I saw a new real estate agency. Uh, in the neighborhood and i'm pretty good at knowing who's here and who isn't and this one i hadn't seen and so i just text the ceo of the brand and said how long have you had an office in 
in this area for? And she said, oh, about 12 months. I said, wow, I've never actually um, noticed them. How are they going? And, of course, you know, I don't want to share too much. She said, you know, they're going well. They're finding their strides. And, of course... But, but- and but course, medium, mate, that's it. Like you've just created yeah. using a different medium. And then yeah. my, all I'm saying is let's transfer that text message from getting that conversation going on text to a face-to-face coffee. Yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, well, and I'm obviously. Now, you, I'll now be dropping in. You you do that anyway. I'm not I'm not talking about you, but, no, but no, I'm just I'll going be, for our listeners. I'll be dropping in and, and, yeah. and seeing if I can help. See if yeah, I can actually it. help them get grass. Get some roots growing into the neighbourhood because there's plenty yeah. of plenty of stock to go around for people if they care, Darren. Yeah. If they care, yeah, love the message number three: get your message right. Yeah, you know this one better than anybody, mate. It's it's and, and you've already given us some examples of this about actually talking about your area, what's changing, what's happening in an area. You know, what are the insights? What are the things people need to know when they're coming into an area? Uh, thinking about what are the the things that you need to think about in a transaction. Uh, you know, if you're thinking about buying this particular car or buying this particular boat, what are the things you should be considering? What are you got to be thinking about? Uh, so, so that what you're doing is you're crafting your message to be able to really be relevant in their current thinking, and you've you've sort of got to put yourself in your customer's head a bit more. And I think that would be a, a, a good takeaway today of of the, for the listeners is just to be able to go actually what are my customers thinking at the moment in my particular product space what are they wanting to know what could be the questions because with a bit of experience in your industry sector you'll actually know pretty much what the customers are are wanting to know and uh it certainly means that your messages will be way way more relevant and received well i think there's a golden rule that comes out of the uh the great book of course like comment share buy we all know this book. If you haven't got that this book, book yet, that book is book. such a good book, yeah, mate. That is that's a piece of bloody. I, it's a good book, but the message in this. If, if I hadn't, if I haven't got a book, if I haven't got one of those, where do I get it? You can get it from Amazon or Booktopia, or you can go to my website, viral.com and you can buy it direct from me, and I'll send it to you. Oh, that's a bloody good idea. Yeah, and, yeah. and is there a special offer on that this month? There will be. Anyone who mentions the podcast, I'll give it to you for. A significant discount. Oh, I'll pay postage. There you go. Oh, so it's a free postage if you mention the podcast. As long as, actually, I don't know what postage is to New Zealand. This could be a lost leader, but that's okay. We'll go with it. But there is a golden rule out of the book. There is a golden rule out of the book. <coughs> Stop making ads. All right. Stop making ads and start being either the news reporter or the travel guide for your business. Oh, nice. Love it. That's it. Love it. If you're in real estate, you're a travel guide. If you're in the services industry, you're a news reporter. Love it. Pretty simple. That's a Just very don't cool. be the ad guy. Don't be don't be the ad guy. Frequency. Right. Frequency. You've got to be consistent. This is the thing, right? This is where all the algorithms and not only the social media algorithms, human algorithms. Humans have algorithms in this mushy thing in here, right? Yes. They have algorithms. If you ring up out of nowhere, after months of disappearing and never hearing from you, just because you're desperate. Yeah. G'day, George. Haven't spoken to you for two years. Remember me? Oh, yeah. G'day, mate. How are you? Yeah, really good. Yep. Oh, I was just wondering uh, if I could sell you something. It's not really going to go down that well, is it? And the topic for our, our podcast today is do you really care? You can pretty much answer that one pretty much straight away, right? Oh mate, I care a lot about you right now because I need more. I need more clients. <laughs> I need to the make some sales. Years, yeah, bit yeah. Uh, I bit was skeptical. fine. Yeah, 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 I'm sure you were good. I watched you on Facebook. You were going okay. I didn't bother calling you till now. So yeah, frequency is really important. Don't. I think what we're saying is don't. You can't fake it. Totally not. We're not trying to trick anyone here. We're actually trying to teach you how to actually be authentic in your business. If you don't care about your customers, you're in the wrong business. 100%. This is not just tricks and traps. This is actually how to be a real operator in the world. Yep. 100%, mate. Very cool. Review and reset. Tip number five. Yeah, the, the, the one that I have here is just your ability to review what you're doing and then reset it. 
and reset it at a care level. So just have a think about how many times in the last eight weeks you've been to someone to drop off a box of uh, chocolates or some flowers or just to just to connect with somebody and actually meet up with them for a cup of coffee or buy, buy them a scone or whatever it is, that you are actually there because you care and that you're connecting and showing that real deeper conversation. So have a think about reviewing and resetting what you've done in your diary over the last eight weeks and actually now create a plan. Start creating a plan of what you need to be doing and actually starting to think that, hey, over the next eight weeks, I'm going to do it different. Yeah, and you will find on the YouTube channel, Blink, B-L hyphen I-N-K, you will find that there was a short clip posted uh, for whenever you listen to this on about the 11th or 12th of May, which is a snippet from a previous episode about the business action plan. Nice. Right, and it's Very good. that's the plan that we're talking about here. Review, so reset, and then go through the steps in that clip for the yeah, business active one. plan. Yeah, not just a business plan, the action plan, active or active action. I'm not sure. I think it's action plan. Action. Follow it. Yeah. Follow it. Follow it. Follow it. Because guess what? I was in a funk on Tuesday. I didn't have any power. I wasn't in my comfortable safe little studio space i had to sit somewhere else and i was like what do i do I can't, I can't access all my hard drives i haven't got all my databases that i normally have i only have my laptop and i went and watched that clip about the action plan I said right this is my scenario i need to review Woo-hoo! where i'm at i need to love reset it. how i'm operating i can't afford to have the day off i would have loved yep. to but i didn't i'm not having the day off i'm going to make use of this and i just set a new plan it took me like 15 minutes and then the rest of the day, off I went. Mate, this topic today, do you really care, is something that really strikes a chord that you've actually got to look internally yourself and your business. You've actually got to take some time to actually go, really, am I digging deeper, deep enough in the conversations that I have with the people around me? Am I caring enough about my team internally? Am I caring enough about our customers? Are our people within our business engaging at a deep enough level with our customers to show we really care? And and I think today, this is such an important topic for the markets that both of us play in right now and what we're seeing across these individual marketplaces. And and I think it's it's something we've got to consider and really start putting in place. Yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, people also have to understand that if you're feeling like you're struggling a little bit, other people are too. Of course. And so there's two ways to think about that. A, there's more people out there looking for people who care for them. So your clients and your customers are going to respond better to it. But also from a competitive point of view, and I'm a competitor, your competitors are also going to be struggling. And so if you dig deeper, if you go in a bit harder, if you roar a bit louder... Yep. They, they're going to drop off. And, you know, Love it. okay, sad news, shed a tear, but it's a competitive world out there. So if you fight now for your ground or try and t- rather than hiding away and shrinking, if you actually try and go bigger and take more space, more market, you yep. be out there more, you take more of the attention of the customer's mind, your competitors are going to drop off easier. The fight's going to be easier. So so true. So you got to make a decision. You're either going to stand up and fight or go do something else. But 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 the thing is, you've got to dig deeper into these connections, right? That's where the gold is. Yes. So walking away to another environment doesn't doesn't mean this goes away, right? You still yeah. the, the, these same things you're going to have to do regardless of where you go. So why not just do it where you are? You've had the experience, you've got the learnings, you know where you need to be. So just just get dig deeper into these relationships, show these people that you care, create more value, and get through. It's going to be easier to do it where you already are, no doubt. Boom! Great episode, Season 2, Episode 7, Do You Really Care? I hope they do. So good, mate. Thank you, buddy. Great episode. Thanks Great for watching, you, of course, across all of iTunes, all podcast platforms, and the Big Red Video Player YouTube. Hey, before we go, how about you go down 
and write us a review about the podcast. It helps spread the message. Maybe grab a link, share it to your to your audience if you enjoy it. When you know, only do it if you want to. But if you could leave us a review, that would really help spread the message of this podcast. We're putting in a an incredible amount of effort to get it up and about. I think we're around 30 episodes now. We enjoy doing it. We want to keep doing it. But we need to be pushing it up to the uh, to the Apple gods so that they share it further and wider. Other than that, so good. it's been a great day. Have a great time. And we'll see great you Great work, mate. Time. Take care, everybody. See you soon. Peace.